year, the General Assembly um, has passed a school funding formula two years ago that continues to bring more adequate uh, funding for our public schools. If you became governor, uh, would you continue the funding formula and how would you pay for it as we come out of the recession? <laughs> Yes, I will uh, continue supporting the formula because I think it's on the right track. As today, uh, I think Governor Rendell has made great strides in his commitment to education. Uh, we presently fund about $3,400 per student. Our goal is the national average is $4,200. We want to be able to commit to do that. There is nothing more important that we can do in this state. There is nothing more important that a governor can do than invest in education. It is good business in the state of Pennsylvania we invest in education. And we have to do it early, right in the beginning. That's why I'm a big believer in universal pre-K. Because if you educate in the beginning of life, the expenses are a lot less later in life. Our job as government leaders is to make sure that the citizens of our state are provided proper education so they become viable, sustaining, and good adults for our community, for our state. And I think there's nothing more important. And so that's why I've always been a great proponent of it. Because by doing that, we create people who think outside the box, who look at challenges and figure out different ways to get around them. Pennsylvania has been challenged for decades as we've seen a decrease in jobs and in opportunities. By defining ourselves as a state that believes in education, we, we then become a location where people want to move to. The people who live here decide they want to stay. They want to be part of Pennsylvania. And that's the most important thing to do. Thank you. I will fully fund the school subsidy formula. Uh, it is widely accepted by all parties as fair uh, to every school, as fair as a state formula can be, and it deserves to be fully funded. Uh, I also want to double the money that is being currently spent on early childhood education. The only way that we can do this fairly uh, is to also have tax reform, to make a graduated state income tax, to lower the uh, burden that we put on local property tax payers by reducing the reliance on the property tax and shifting taxes to income and ability to pay. Uh, Pennsylvania is currently paying about 35% of total school costs uh, from state government. The national average for states is 47%. We are way behind the national average. And what happens when 30, only 35% comes from the state? Obviously, the remainder has to come from the local property tax which is regressive and unfair to anybody on a fixed income, and certainly to seniors. So to fully meet our obligations uh, to public education, you know, we also need significant and progressive tax reform in Pennsylvania, and I will get that done. Thank you. Thank you. Obviously, there's going to be some common ground between the many of us up here, uh, and the next governor is going to face a pretty tough economic situation with uh, stimulus drying up, uh, with the uh, pension issue uh, that's coming forward, and uh, the $1.6 billion of one-time revenues that are currently balancing this budget. As you go and move forward, you have to make tough decisions, and, and I had to do it uh, as I look to uh, balance uh, the budget at the county uh, when I inherited the problem I did six years ago. There's certain things, though, that you make very clear from the start that are non-negotiable. And the two issues that I made very clear early on and all my policy papers and all the speeches and all the debates is that early childhood funding must continue and the fully funding of the costing out study and the formula has to continue for, for several reasons. All of the results have shown that every grade in Pennsylvania has improved because of the funding formula. The only state that can say that right now. Sure, we have a way to go yet, but you don't want to go backwards. Early childhood. I've been critical over my career of some federal programs that are out there, but I want to tell you what I think is the best federal program I've ever seen, Head Start. Uh, I run the second largest county. I've seen a lot of Head Start programs. <laughs> this, in many cases, is the difference between living a productive life or being in the criminal justice system at age 13 or 14. Get these kids as early as possible, give them a chance at life. As governor, I will not bend on those two issues. They're that important, and if you want to Take pressure on the property taxes. You've got to properly fund the school system. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. The full funding formula is a very important formula. And in this past uh, budget in state government, 
there was an over 5% increase to the general education budget. What most of you don't know uh, is that there was a zero in increase of state funding for special education, for schools for the blind and schools for the deaf. So while general education got a 5% increase, those other special ed education classes did not. That is unacceptable to me. Uh, those children are children that have special needs and should deserve the same consideration in the budget process. As governor, I will make sure that will happen. I have been one of the strongest advocates and I have proved it with my vote as a state senator and have advocated for early childhood education before it was ever provided in state government. I strongly believe that we need to work with children at the youngest of ages to make sure they don't become the dropouts in education. Dropout and the rate of dropout in Pennsylvania has been a subject that has been ignored. And it will no longer be ignored if I'm governor. Because it's 20%, it's too high, and we're forgetting our children, a significant part of our children. Early childhood education is part of that formula, but it's much, much more, most importantly, a commitment of leadership by the governor of the Commonwealth.